To start doing spiral, you wanna cut a nice end, use a little bit of water to make sure that it's nice and smooth and not cracked. Slowly start to turn the inside of the spiral, then the rest of the coil should follow. Apply firm but gentle pressure to make sure that everything is sticking together. To make sure that your end doesn't unravel, you need to add a little bit of water to the ends and where the end is going to go. You can also cut the end so it has a little bit of a more gentle curve as it's connected. You can use a paintbrush to clean up any imperfections that you may have had while you were rolling up your spiral. For a double spiral, you're gonna start very similarly by cutting off your ends and making sure that your coil and your ends look nice. When you start to roll up your coil, you wanna make sure that you roll it up very small and go very slow. Do not roll it all the way though. Before you do that, flip it to the other side and roll the other end of the coil. Now slowly roll up each coil, place a little bit water where the ends are gonna to connect to the middle. And then just like before, use a little paintbrush to clean up any edges. For arches, you're gonna to wanna to start with your center arch. So make sure that you have two nice ends. You can use a little bit of water to make sure the ends are nice. And you're gonna form whatever archway you want. It can be a small arch, it can be a big arch. On your second arch, you're gonna do the same thing. Have a nice end, and then you're going to use the middle arch to measure how big your second arch should be. To adhere the two arches to each other, you're gonna use a little bit of water, kind of mush it around a little bit to make that slip, and then smush them together with gentle but firm pressure. On your last arch, or really however many you want to do, make sure again that you're measuring, you're using that water to adhere, and then when you're happy with your arch, you wanna make a cut across all the different arches. In this case, there's six different ends of the arch, and then clean anything up with a paintbrush or tools and a little bit of water. For these first short coils, I'm gonna actually roll my coil a little bit smaller than a pencil. I'm gonna cut three somewhat equal sections. I'm gonna get each one a little bit wet and use gentle but firm pressure to push them together, kind of looking like a Kit Kat bar. I'm gonna use my paper clip to, to cut where I want the tops and bottoms to be so it's consistent and then clean up any edges. On this thicker one, I want you guys to see that you don't just have to use the short coils to form a rectangle or a square. You can actually use it to form any sort of geometric shape. Here, I'm kind of going for a trapezoid shape with the angled edges in. I'm making sure that all my coils are connected to each other, their edges are cut consistently, and then I'm smoothing out the edges to make sure I have one solid shape, one that happens to be a rectangle that's smaller and one that's a trapezoid. For donuts, you're gonna start with a sphere that you roll in your hands and you're gonna use a pencil or maybe the end of a paintbrush to poke a little hole. Do not put the hole all the way through. We need to make sure that we still have a back part that is intact because that's how we're gonna make sure that these bowls are nice and practical. You can use a paintbrush to clean up any sort of donuts that you make. You can also slowly put pressure on the paintbrush to make your hole a little bit wider. You also have the option of smushing your donut to make it a little bit thinner and not so rounded before you put the hole through. Just again, please make sure if you're doing donuts that the back of the donut is still intact so that we can make a nice bowl. When you grab a coil from your coil factory, don't forget to cut off the yucky end and make sure that it looks nice. If you see any imperfections, go ahead and clean them up. For fold, you really are just gonna be working sort of like a zigzag. You wanna make sure that when you're doing the folds that you are taking into account that you're measuring. I kind of used my knuckle there to measure how far I want it to go back and forth and back and forth. You'll also notice that I'm putting water in between the layers. That's to make sure that the coil itself stays connected to the different coil layers. I'm also going through and cleaning up any imperfections. You also do have the option with the folds, or I like to call them zigzags, to make your coil a little bit smaller than a pencil. Just beware, it does get more fragile here, but this can help you make a little baby fold that can go on a smaller part of your project so you don't have such a huge ginormous fold. Again, make sure that your coil is wet in the areas where you're attaching it. Use firm pressure to make sure everything is nice and zigzagged. For twist, you're gonna actually wanna start off with coils that are smaller than a pencil, and that's because you are basically make something that's gonna be about the size of a pencil. So don't make it too small that it's too hard to manage, but I would say maybe a little bit smaller than a pencil. You're gonna take two, tw 
two coils and you're gonna smush them together and you wanna make sure that you have water on the twist so that wherever you twist it here, now this is some slow motion for you. One hand is twisting towards my body, one hand is twisting away from my body. By using this mechanism, you're gonna make sure that you are not over handling your clay, but it's twisting nice and neat for you. When you get to the end of the twist, same as you did at the beginning, kind of twist or close it off together with a little bit of a pinch, and then you can clean up any uh, cracks or edges that you may have with a little bit of water. Kind of looks like a unicorn horn. Braids is the hardest of all the techniques. Just know that you're probably gonna mess it up on your first or maybe even your second time. I purposely mess up in this video to show you how you could possibly save it. Start by rolling your coils thinner than a pencil. Don't make them too thin that they're stringy, but a nice, a nice thinness. You wanna make sure that all three strands that you're gonna use are similar in thickness, just like if you were braiding hair or braiding yarn. You're gonna start by smashing the pieces together. Yeah, I know that's ugly. It's just to make sure they're connected. When you're braiding, you wanna make sure to always have a middle piece selected. So you're going right over center, left over center, right over center, left over center. One of the three pieces is always your center. Now, I made a big mistake, so I just used a paintbrush uh, and a tool to fix it, but as you can see, pulling on it, made it fall apart more. It's just a really weak spot on my braid. I show you here how you can fix it and you can kind of scrape it and push it together a little bit more. In all honesty, I probably should have just cut it off at that point and I still would have had a nice looking braid, just not quite as long. You can use a paintbrush and you can use some other tools to smooth out any imperfections. You also want to make sure to give your braid a nice squeeze to make sure it's fully connected. Spheres are one of the most widely used forms in coil built projects. The first thing you can do is you can make some small spheres. You can use small spheres to make bigger objects. So here I'm gonna actually try and make a flower using seven different spheres. I'm gonna start with the center sphere and then work my way into connecting them all. Remember when you're adhering things to other things, you need to make sure to put a little bit of water on the object and on the, the object you're adhering and the object that it is adhering to. You wanna make sure to apply gentle but firm pressure to make sure that everything is nice and connected. Ta-da! You can also make spheres that are flattened. So you just kind of take your finger and smash it. Now, that was a really yucky flattened smear. It was very cracky. So I wanna make sure to add a little bit more water and smooth it out with the edges. And that's a much looking better, kind of, if you wanna call it like a disc, it kind of looks like a peppermint or butterscotch. Lastly, you can take spheres and you can just cut them in half. Those are called half spheres. Uh, they allow you to have volume on one side and a flat uh, side on the other side, duh, right? 